So now we move on to the Lightning Network. There's a little bit of context that we need to learn, um, a little bit of theory, as well as practical applications of that. My node obviously is the practical application of it, which I'll go through. But I think to fully appreciate and understand what we're uh, doing with the Lightning Network, um, it's important to go through a little bit of the context as to why Lightning Network, as well as a little bit of the theory behind how it works from a self-custody perspective. You will have hopefully done your uh, first Bitcoin transaction or getting familiar with Bitcoin transactions, either that's through your Electrum wallet or your um, Samurai wallet or any other wallet that you have, uh, and also getting comfortable with keys and and um, your private keys, your public keys, your seeds, and all those sorts of things. It's important that you get those things bettered down right now uh, before you progress on through to, um, I guess, playing around with the Lightning Network. Now, just to set some bit of context, uh, you will have noticed with your um, Bitcoin transactions a few things. Number one is that it is slow. It's slow to the extent that uh, you can't just sort of tap and go. Um, so if you were to purchase, for instance, a cup of coffee or your grocery bills, um, then you would have to wait, you know, ten at least 10 minutes for a confirmation, more likely to be longer. Um, and so that is not really feasible in the real world. The other thing that you will also find is that your that the hard drive space um, on your on your drive uh, is constantly growing, and what that represents is somebody's transaction. So I guess the question that needs to be asked is: Is it feasible for seven billion people to transact on the Bitcoin network, adding to? this huge database uh, that is on my hard drive, but not only mine, but others and everybody else's. Um, and I would think that that's probably not feasible for the long term. The other thing is, is it's not instantly settled. So those are two key problems uh, that should hopefully um, be addressed. And so what the Lightning Network is, is a proposal. It is a layer two scaling proposal and it sits on top of Bitcoin. Um, so your Lightning Network node will talk to your Bitcoin node. Now it's important to understand also that this is alpha grade software. And what I mean by that is that it is not mature, meaning there is a complex amount of code here uh, that hasn't really stood the test of time, so to speak. Um, and there could be bugs. And in fact, there have been bugs in the past. It is still relatively new and therefore has been given a hashtag of reckless to it. And so it's really important that we don't put too much money into the Lightning Network at this point in time. So I wouldn't reckon be, me be recommending that you put in your life savings onto the Lightning Network. Um, now, obviously, yeah, it is up to you what you want to do. However, this is still very, very uh, new technology and it is still being built out. So this is what the Lightning Network is trying to solve. Um, and there are different groups in the community who are obviously bullish about Lightning and some who are bearish. But we're really trying to explore what this technology can do. Hopefully it gets to a stage where we stream packets of money to people um, through the Lightning Network. That's what something like a feature that I'd like to see. But at this point, I think what we're trying to do is just achieve that tap and go status um, in terms of payments. Now, there are three implementations to, oh, well, sorry, there's not three. There's 
more than three, but there are three main implementations um, of the Lightning Network. Uh, that is LND, which is developed by Lightning Labs, um, which is the one that sits on your MyNode right now. There's also C Lightning by Blockstream and Eclair by Async. Um, those are the three uh, main ones. And I think also Electrum is working to build their implementation of the Lightning Network as well. So there's you know, diff several different implementations. However, they all by and large should do the same thing and all should connect with each other and talk to each other. So now I wanna take you through a little bit of the theory around uh, Lightning Network nodes. Now, in keeping consistent, I've also got uh, a shitty diagram. Here is your Lightning Network node here, and that is a hot wallet. So when you first create that, um, you will get you know a hot wallet. What you will do is then put some on-chain funds or make an on-chain transaction to fund your Lightning Network node. What you would then do after that has been confirmed is open up a direct channel with a peer. I'll talk a little bit more about peers and who you can connect up with, but you would open up a direct channel. And that jet direct channel is a two of two multi-signature transaction with another peer. That is another Lightning Network node operator. And so that amount is then locked in or what's known as, I guess, prepaid, okay? So if you are opening up a channel with someone, that would give you payment capacity, okay? If somebody else is opening up a direct channel with you, then that would represent incoming capacity or inbound liquidity. I'll talk more a little bit about the channels um, and how that works, but let me just go through the flow. So once we have a direct channel open with somebody, what we can do is then invoice them. Uh, and so here you will be able to invoice as well as pay invoices. Now, if you have opened up the channel with somebody, then you will only have the ability to send. Once you've sent across funds, they will then give you, or what, that will open up incoming uh, liquidity. So once the toing and froing of the transactions between you and your channel partner um, has occurred, so say for example, your channel partner invoices you for X amount and then you invoice them back with Y amount and then, you know, there's some toing and froing that's happening between the two of you. What you can do is what's known as collaboratively close. So then what will happen is that your channel will show, okay, this is how much you are owed and this is how much your partner is owed. And the two of two multi-signature transaction will end up your side or what you're owed will end up back onto your hot wallet here. And for them, uh, for your partner, that will end up to uh, their hot wallet. You might be thinking then, does this only work for you know the peer that you open up with? That's not necessarily the case. If the conditions are right, and I will just rotate the image here, but if you have your node here and you've got a direct channel with another peer, and then that peer has direct or channels open with you know these other peers, and then these peers have uh, channels open with others, you can start to see a network forming. If the conditions are right and you request for a payment or you want to pay a or make a payment, then this peer that you have direct direct channel to can be a hop and put you in touch with this peer, for, for instance, and you can pay them. So you don't have to necessarily have a direct channel um, operating with uh, the person that you want to pay. Now, this peer will then collect a small amount of a transaction fee or what's known as a routing fee. Um, and it's very, very small at the moment. And so they will collect a routing fee for putting you in touch with this peer. 
So that's effectively the flow of how a, I guess, the, the, the Lightning Network works. Um, you need to manage your channels. Um, and so that becomes the real important thing to res- not only have payment capacity, but also to have receive capacity. And I'll talk a little bit about how you can get both and avenues of which who you should who you might want to look into opening up a channel with, as well as who uh, or how you can receive inbound liquidity as well. I'll talk a little bit about that a bit later. Now let's move on to the actual channels itself. So I'm using um, a Spark wallet. This is my Lightning Network node here. Um, And I'll talk you through some of the channels here. So I've got, you know, a couple of channels here, you know, there's a handful here. And you can see that it works kind of like an abacus. So if you have a look at this, uh, I guess, um, fourth, four million Satoshi uh, channel here, that is the capacity of the channel. Now, what is spendable, meaning what I can pay is 2.2 million Satoshis. And what I can receive out of this channel is 1.6 million Satoshis. So you can see that bar tab or sorry, the abacus in play here. Now, here is another channel. This is a receiving amount, right? And you'll notice that the capacity is 5 million sats, but the receivable is only 4.95 million sats. That 50,000 sat difference is actually the trend reserved for a transaction fee uh, for when you want to close the trans or close the channel. Okay, so that is what that 50,000 sats represents the fee to close the channel. So they leave a little bit uh, just for that to occur. Now, those this is at, at a basic level how. Um, the channels will work. So then you will want to pay. Uh, So if you get a payment request, then you can put that request in and decode it and pay it. And if you want to request, you can say, all right, well, I want 500 Satoshis. You can put in a description and then you hit request. A Lightning Network invoice will look something like this. It's a bunch of um, gibberish. What you can do is then scan that with your mobile phone or copy and paste this to somebody that you wish to pay. So that is how it would generally work.